Good morning, everyone. I hope um, everyone can hear me okay. Um, and uh, thank you for everybody, especially um, on the further time zones, for joining us uh, this late in the day. It's very much appreciated to have you all here. Um, so just a bit of housekeeping before we start. I um, just wanted to say that this meeting is actually being recorded um, at the moment, so please uh, be aware of that fact. Um, and yes, we also have some time at the end of this session for questions and answers. Um, so if you do have any questions, you're very welcome to type those into the chat feature that we have on Zoom. And we will get to all those at the end. So there's a Q&A feature and there's a chat feature. And do feel free to take advantage of both of those. And we'll definitely pick up your questions and respond to those at the end of the session. Um, OK, so let me just start by sharing my screen with you all here. So. There we go, and fingers crossed here we'll be able to see that now. Whoops. Let's go there. Good. There we go. Okay, wonderful. So, hello, uh, my name is Caroline. I'm the training manager for Cambridge University Press Academic site. Um, on the call today, we've got my colleague Dave. Dave Morris, and he's our digital projects editor. So he's going to do a little section for us today as well about sort of the developments on the e-reader and, and sort of some of the pathways that we've um, taken to come here today with the higher education website. Um, so yes, as mentioned, we have 10 minutes um, for questions at the end. So um, please do um, uh, feel free to put your questions into the chat box as we go. So we're going to have a look today at our brand new, wonderful higher education website. Um, and this just launched, full launch, on Friday. So it's really new. So you guys are the first group getting to have a bit of a look at it um, in its full launch capacity. We did do a beta launch in, at the end of June. Um, originally, this website was due to launch at the end of the year. And because of the um, situation with COVID, we decided that we were going to try and bring that forward because we became very much aware of how important access to electronic resources was for our customers. And we really wanted to be able to deliver this textbook website for our customers. So we um, had a bit of an internal meeting and decided we're going to try the very ambitious strategy to get this launched in June. So we did have a beta launch in June um, and full launch with all of the instructor resources for all you lovely people that just happened on Friday, as I mentioned. If you are familiar with our academic platform, Cambridge Core, the higher education website is going to feel very familiar because it is built on the same technology. So there's a lot of functionality that's very similar between the two. Now, um, I don't know if anyone's done any project development, but we have used a methodology called Agile to develop both Cambridge Core and the higher education website. What this means to you is that there will be continual release of content. So Agile means that um, we're constantly working on new features and every two weeks and, and there's a new little release. So you should still be seeing quite a lot of updating to the site as we go. There's lots of lovely new things still coming out for you. And because of that, we're still adding new content to the site every week. So we have approximately 611 books on there today. Um, and new books are getting digitized all the time. I've got a few statistics on this page, actually. Um, so quite a specific number, 611 titles. And we're a multidisciplinary publisher. So our content actually covers 31 main subject areas. Uh, we're going to have a little look at those in a, in a few moments. Most of this section, session today is actually going to be within the live site itself. But I just have these few slides of content and I wanted to talk through, just give us a little preamble before we go onto the site. Um, so we'll have a look at those subject areas briefly, but we do cover um, both the humanities, social sciences and the science, technology, medicine 
um, and we've got a few examples of our, our main subject areas there. And I just wanted to mention as well about the two-step authentication. So I think this is quite similar to what a lot of other publishers do. So it should be something that you're already quite familiar with, but your access to the books will be denoted by your, um, the institutional IP you're coming in from. So once you're within your university's network, then you'll be recognized by IP. If you've logged on to the library catalog remotely by a proxy server or by Shibboleth, you'll also be recognized by, by the institution's IP. So that denotes your access to content. In order to read the content, you need to be logged in on the higher education website with your credentials, so with a, new, a username and password. If you already have a Cambridge Core username and password, you can use those to log in on the higher education website, so they work across both. Um, and if you don't, you're very welcome just to register for our username and password on the higher education website. And um, that will also work on Cambridge Core as well. So you'll be able to use those credentials to log in across both. So I just put some screenshots there just in case. We always could have some backup screenshots. But why don't we go now into the website and have a look? Um, I'm going to talk about a few of these things um, and also I'm going to take a look at all the interesting content and the e-reader and some of the functionality as well. So here's our, our lovely website, cambridge.org forward slash higher education. So from the main page, first of all, I just briefly want to show you some of those subject areas that I mentioned. Um, there's a couple of, couple of ways you can access. You can come up here to the subjects section on the top. And you can see the subject areas there. Um, or conversely, just a little bit further down the screen, we've got them listed out here as well. And once you drill into one of those, so for example, if we go into life sciences here, we'll then be able to see the sub subjects within that category. So this is a good way of discovering content. So you could sort of just start from a top level subject and drill down to find the books within your sub subject area. Um, you know, it's all the nice, interesting sub subjects here that you could drill into. So that's one way of sort of discovering content. And I just wanted to give you a bit of a sense of the different subject areas that we cover at Cambridge. So it's well worth, I think, coming to just have a little look at this subject hub. But if I just come back up one more, just to kind of get a sense of what might be available in your area. I'm just going to use the um, header page here just to get back to the front page and then just before we go any further so I'd like to show you searching but before we do that I just want to show you how to register on the website because of course as I mentioned that isn't that is mandatory in order to be able to read the content so um, what you need to do is come up here to this login button and then once again log in so they don't make it easy to find this registration button, <laughs> but it's just down here um, below the login. So here's the part where you would come to register. And once you do that, you're taken out to this registration form. Um, so as mentioned, you do need to have a username and password in order to be able to read any of the content on the website. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me fill this form out. Um, it's all quite um, self-explanatory. I think first name, last name, email address. You can type in your organization here to register. Now, if you are an instructor and you want to register for the instructor role, you need to just tick this checkbox here. Um, to say that you're an instructor and that will give you access to a few different resources um, once you've been verified. So we ask you to tick this checkbox and then if you could give us you in your either instructor URL, so your own personal web page, um, or if your university has the contact page and if you're listed on there, that would be very useful for us. That, that helps speed up the validation checks to give you the instructor role. So it'll be very much appreciated. Um, and then if you can create a password and just accept the terms of use, 
And then if you wish to stay informed about marketing, um, please also tick this and then you can start on the website. Now, as I hope you will probably guess, I'm already registered, of course, um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come back out to where we were and I can use my credentials to log in. So once registered, you'd follow that same pathway back from the front page and then we can actually use the username and password to log in. Lovely, so I'm now logged in with my credentials. Um, and I can start to show you a few of the features of the platform, of the, apologies, of the website. Um, so let's have a little look. Um, one thing I would like to show you quickly, it's actually, um, before we just got to get started with searching, um, there's one nice little document that's in this um, librarian section. Actually, I know we're, we're all instructors today, but it's still worthwhile, I think, knowing about this. We have a title list just here. And this is a list of all of the titles that are currently live. So actually, I think it's quite useful to go and reference this list. Um, so you can just click here to download that and it's just in a simple Excel file. So it's, it's worth getting a copy of that, I think, if you're just interested in seeing what is currently available on the website. Let me just come back out to the front page again, following this trail up here. Um, okay, so let's have a bit of a search on the, um, on the front page. I'm going to search for sustainable engineering. So I'm just going to put my search term in there and I'm gonna click this button here to search. So I've got 100, 110 results there. So um, we don't actually have an advanced search option. We get asked about this a lot. So what we have instead is the ability to refine your search. So on the left here, you can refine your search down to um, start to build up an advanced search. So you could, for example, choose to only show content that you have access to. Um, so you're welcome to click that one. You could also sort to have this um, filtered by publication date. So for example, we could say, okay, I only want to see content published in the last three years. And as you come down, you could also sub, um, filter by your subjects. So we could look at this and say, okay, well, I'm interested in engineering. And these little arrows next to each section give you a little drop down um, and then you can actually choose the sub subject within that so this is quite worth knowing about i think it's um not immediately obvious but you can then sort of have a look here and we can say okay i'm going to choose engineering general interest for example and then really drill down to that specific subject area that um, within where you're looking at as you start to build up your search, you'll see that your search parameters are appearing at the top here. So you can really see the filters that you've applied. And if at any point you think, oh, actually, I just want to get rid of that one, it's really easy, actually, just to add or take away from here. So if we think, actually, I, I didn't want to filter by gen engineering general interest, I want to see all engineering titles, you can just click the little cross here and that'll go away. And then your search expands back to what it was a moment ago. Um, we have a couple of features, personalization features available as well from the search results. So you can choose to add content to bookmarks or export citations. Um, all you need to do, so if we just check a couple of these books, so let's say we thought these books looked quite interesting, for example, we could then add them to our bookmarks by clicking this button here. So that's been um, added there. Now it does say to manage your bookmarked content, go to my bookmarks. So that is a way of accessing your bookmarks section. However, I'm not gonna navigate away, away to there yet. I'd like to sort of show you how to get there the long way around um, a little bit later. We're going to go and have a look at your bookmarks section after we've had a look at a few other things. So. Let's just make a note of that and remember um, we're going to come back to that. If you'd like to get the citations for these two books instead, you can also click the export citations button. 
Now, it's really nice citation feature here that we've got on the higher education website, actually. So this has um, been done in an APA format, but actually we can change this to be a different format. So we've got quite a lot of formats listed in this citation tool. So if we just click this blue button, we could look, for example, for Chicago manual style. And just check and just select that. So whichever format you're using in un at your university, you should be able to find that here. And then you can actually have the citation reformatted to that particular way. Then all we need to do is probably the quickest is to copy it to clipboard. I think I'm quite a fan of that, but you can also download this or export it to a number of citation tools as well. We've got EasyBib or RefWorks available there for you. So I'm just gonna come out of this by pressing the cross. And let's just deselect those two books there. And I'm just going to come up the screen and we can look at sustainable engineering just here. So let's look at this title. There's a few things I'd like to show you in this title. And then I'm going to go back out and we're going to look at another title and we can look at the e-reader on that. Okay, wonderful. So this is the book landing page. Um, so we've got our book, um, book uh, cover there. So still, even though we're online, we get to see the cover. Um, a couple of options here. We've got basic e-commerce at the moment where individuals can go to buy the print book. You'll notice that from this page, you also have the option to add this book to your bookmarks and to cite this book as well. So those options are in a couple of places around the website. One thing you might be interested in is this button here to request an examination copy. So if you did want to request an examination copy or we call it in some parts of the world, an inspection copy to this title, this is where you need to do that. So if I just click this button and then I've got my um, request examination copy form. Um, there's four parts to fill out. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to bore you by forcing me to <laughs> forcing you to watch me fill this out today. Um, it's reasonably self-explanatory, but you just put in a few of your details here, um, advance to each stage as you go, and it'll ask you for a little bit more information at each step. And then you'll have your inspection copy request submitted. Um, there is a section in your account where you can see the progress of that request. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that when we go and look at bookmarking, I'm going to show you where those inspection copy requests go. So we can have a look at that. But it's quite nice. It all syncs into our fulfillment system. So you can track the progress of that inspection copy request. And just to let you know, we are digital first. So we do try and send out electronic by default. So just to be aware of that, we prefer um, online requesting. So let me just come um, back up here to um, the uh, HE website front page. I'd just like to pop into a different book now. Um, and let's have a little look at um, Introduction to Population Biology. Just hit enter on my keyboard to perform the search there. So here we go, we've got um, quite a um, lot of search results there. And we can look at this particular book that I wanted to look at just here. So if we come into the book itself, we can see we've got all of the same options as we previously had. Now, um, there is one other option that I just wanted to show you quickly, which is add to offline bookshelf. So we do have some offline reading permitted. Um, it's, I'm now going to show you the app for this um, shortly. I'd like to look at the online reader first, and then we can go to the offline reader. But basically, um, you can click this button to add this book to your offline bookshelf. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because I'd like to show you something else to do with the um, bookshelf a bit later on. Um, but just to let you know, that's how you do that. Let's have a very quick look. I'm sure everyone's absolutely so keen to see the, um, the reader itself. But just before we get there, I'd just like to talk you through these few tabs here um, that we see on every book landing page just very briefly so that um, I can orientate you around the book to let you know what to expect. So of course we have the table of contents here. 
we have the key features tab, which just gives you a little bit of an overview about the, about the book itself. So it's quite nice, just a, a very brief summary um, in a bullet, a bullet point format. I'm going to come back to resources because that's probably the most interesting one. We'll probably talk the most about that. So let's just save that for the end. A um, little bit of information about the authors under the authors tab. No prizes for guessing, but in the reviews section, you can find, you've guessed it, reviews about the book. Um, so there's a couple of reviews there. And the metrics section will show you any alt metric scores that this book has. Now, I don't know how familiar everyone on the call is with alt metric, but it's actually pretty nice. It's a way of gauging the social impacts that a book has had. So it tells you how many times this book's DOI has been tweeted, um, shared to Facebook, blogged about, picked up by news sources. You can click the Altmetric badge there as well, and that will take you out to the Altmetric website and you can get a bit more detail about what's being said about that book. But it's another way of assessing value. Um, and on the information tab, it's a little bit of information about the print book really. Um, paperback version here and hardback if it's available. Just gives you the dimensions and the page counts and, and what have you. So let's just go to the resources section. So this is where you will request access to um, instructor resources should you um, want to get access to those. So I'm just gonna click to view resources. I hope that wasn't too quick for anyone. Um, so from here, we've actually come through to where the resources for this book are available. So we've got some general um, resources here. Those are available to download right away. Um, you just use this nice download button. So you've got a, looks like a, a Word document there, some zip files. And then we've got the instructor resources. Now, this might be what you're particularly interested in, in gaining access to. So of course, these are locked at the moment. But if you want to request access to those, you just need to click the Un Unlock Instructor Resources button. You're then going to get a little pop-up that just asks you to accept the terms and conditions. And you can click to request access. I'm not going to do that right now because I need to keep this example for further trainings. Um, so I'll just come out of that. What happens when you click to request access is that goes into our, one of our, our systems and we pick that request up. And then we just have to do the usual validation checks prior to granting access to the instructor resources. Part of that as well is um, we get given um, the information that you registered with. So if you have um, provided us with that um, instructor URL, that can make the process a little bit quicker. We're generally, our teams are generally pretty good though at getting these processed, so you hopefully won't be waiting too long to get access once you sent that through. Let me just come back to um, the book by following the crumb trail at the top. Okay, lovely. So why don't we have a look at the book itself? So I can come into this button here to read this book online. Now this has jumped straight in at chapter 14 and that's because this is where I left the book off um, yesterday. I was doing a little bit of um, grabbing screenshots and so um, it's jumped straight back to where I was, which I think is quite a nice feature. And again, that's why of course we need to ask you all to register and log in. So this has really made this book my own because it's just brought me back to where I left off, um, just to where I was yesterday. So let me show you a few features of the e-reader. So we're on, we're on chapter 14 here. Um, there's quite a few things available at the moment. So let's just go through what you can and can't do with the book. Um, so first of all, we've got bookmarking. You can see I've dropped a little bookmark here yesterday actually, but let's go through the text a little bit further and, and get away from that. And we'll drop a new bookmark down. So how about if we look at this one here? All I need to do is grab the bookmark icon and just click it once and then I can drag drop that into um, anywhere in the text and that adds a bookmark for me in the text. 
if I want to see the bookmarks that I've got, all I need to do is come over here to the left hand side, there's this bookmark section. And then I've got my bookmarks list, listed out there. So you can see they're both in chapter 14. We saw the other one a little bit further up the page. Um, I can edit those if I want. Um, so I could click here on the little pen and edit that. Give it a name. Just to let myself um, know what I'm bookmarking. So it makes a little bit sense, a bit more sense when I come back to it. If I'm finished with the bookmark and I don't want that bookmark anymore, I can use the trash can icon just to trash that. So that's all quite nice and easy, I think. Um, it just you can drop bookmarks in wherever you're interested in, in seeing a bit more about the text. Um, we've also got our table of contents just here. So it's collapsed by default but we can actually open that up if I just click here and I can navigate to another um, chapter within the book if I want. But I think haploid and psychotic selection is actually quite a nice place for us to look at. So let's stay where we are for now. Um, highlighting is quite easy to do on the text as well, I'm happy to say. So all you need to do is drag across any of the text that you'd like to highlight. So I've just dragged my cursor across there. When I let go, this little menu pops up and I can highlight that text into a color. So why don't we put that as green? I've got four colors available to me. Um, so I can use those for different features that I'd like to highlight within the text. And once I've done, let's maybe go and highlight something else, shall we? Probably students want to highlight a lot of text. Um, so let's do a little bit more. Let's highlight this one into pink. And if I'd like once again to see those, um, I can actually come across to the left here, to my annotations. And I should be able to see all the things I've highlighted. So I've got two bits of highlighting here that I create. You see the date I created those as well. It's quite small on the screen, but um, 24th of um, August, so that's today. Um, I made a note yesterday. Uh, it's an exciting Sunday, I have to say, <laughs> and another bit of highlighting um, over here that I did yesterday as well. Um, let me just show you how to pop a note into this text while we're here. So I could just click this again to dismiss this annotations menu, to swipe that back over to the side. And if I wanted to um, sort of put a note into the text, I can just kind of highlight where I'd like to put that note. Um, let's say this and instead of choosing highlight I could just choose note and then I can just um, type in whatever I'd like to type whatever I would um, typically be jotting into the margin of a print book and I've got my digital note there so just save that and now I've got a note and if I want to see that I just go over to the annotations menu here and we can see look I've got my notes there so it's all quite nice and easy actually. A um, couple of options. Once again, just the same as with bookmarking. If I want to edit my notes, I can actually use this little, um, this little tool here. So I can add a bit of text or delete and then just click to save. If I'm finished with my notes, just want to erase that. Oh, you can't do that with print, can you? So just uh, quickly uh, use the trash can icon and then I can just confirm and get rid of that note. So erased completely back to a lovely clean book. Um, I can change the color of my highlighted text as well if I want. So if I wanted to change that to blue, let's say, I can do that and that's changed up here or I can get rid of my highlighting altogether with the delete button. So quite easy just to navigate through my annotations there actually. Um, I can also navigate to a particular chapter and so I can just really refine down to annotations within one chapter. So I'm just gonna dismiss this either with the cross there or just like we did with the bookmarks, just with over here. I should just um, point out that um, printing is available. So we've got the print icon up here. Um, you can print up to 15% of any given book 
And what's really nice, when we go to choose to print, it actually doesn't give you it as a percentage. It does the calculation for you. So it gives us 69 pages of this book, 460 page total. So it's calculated the absolute number for us, which is quite lovely. Thank you for that on online reader. Um, so as you, if I were to print 10 pages now, and then I tried to print again, I would be told I have 59 pages left to print. So it's up to 15% of any given book. So if I just cancel this one now, because I'm not connected to a printer at home. <laughs> um, just one last little feature to show you is um, the ability to change the text size. So you can just do that in this little settings menu at the top. Let's make our text big, shall we? You can also toggle annotations on and off within the text if you like. And then now our text is all huge. Okay, so that's lovely. That's the online reader, and I think it's um, quite nice actually. It, it moves quite quickly, it's quite it's responsive, and you can do everything you want to fairly quickly. If we um, were going somewhere and we knew we wouldn't have connectivity, we can click that button that we saw on the, on the book landing page. If I just come back over here, I'm just going to close the, let's just close the, um, online reader. It opens in a new tab so it's really easy just to close that down and then you're back on the front page. So I could add this to, to my offline bookshelf. Now I'm not going to do that because I want to show you something else but um, why don't we go into the offline bookshelf and just to have a look at what this looks like. So I've got the app here. I'm going to show you where to download it from. So there's a desktop version here. Now you might see Introduction to Population Biology is actually in my offline bookshelf, but I didn't add it to the bookshelf. Every time you view the e-reader of a book, it will add kind of a temporary file here. So this sort of shows you your most recently read books. If I did see that and I suddenly thought, oh, I would actually like to be able to read that offline, I've just got to click the little download button um, and then it's available for me. So it's kind of just a little aid to memory to have these ones that you've looked at over the last, I think it's the last seven days um, that you can actually have a look at. This one, however, you can see it's all bright. So these are kind of grayed out a little bit with the download button. This one I did add to my offline bookshelf. Um, so that's there and available for me to access offline. So if I went into flight mode on my computer right now, not only would I disconnect this call, of course, but um, I would also be able to continue reading this book because that is available for me. And if I just click it, you're going to see that this offline reader replicates very well the online functionality. So I'm, I'm not going to take you through all of this because it's exactly the same as what we've just looked at. I would mention once you've made notes and annotations here, though, just to click the sync button. Then when you're back online, that will sync to the online version of the book for you. Just to update all of your, all your notes and what have you. Um, navigate through page by page just with this little button here. It's really quite intuitive when you come on to use it. So I hope everyone's going to um, enjoy the reading experience. But yes, um, so this is called Cambridge Spiral. Um, so let's have a quick look at how to download this. And then I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots of the Android app that I got at the weekend. Um, and then we can have a bit of a look at Q&A. And my colleague Dave will give us a little bit of a uh, discussion of some of the features as well. Um, and then we'll have a bit of Q&A. Um, so if I just come out of the, the um, offline reading app here, just going to minimise that. If I come up to my account, And I'll go to my account just there. So here's my um, dashboard. Now, um, I can see, first of all, remember we mentioned the examination copy requests. I can actually see the examination copy that I've requested previously here. And you can see the status is requested and that will track through as it goes through our fulfillment system. So you'll then um, be able to see how that's progressing. 
And you have got another section here, look, for examination copies. Um, it's basically the same information, so um, not sure why they put it twice, but I guess examination copies are so important that um, it's, not, it's worth having here twice. So we can also see that request in here. Now, do you remember at the start, we did bookmarks and content. So I did promise how to show, to show you how to get back to that. So we've got our bookmark section just here. And here's the books that I've actually bookmarked um, in the last few sessions. So there's quite a few there. So this just means that I've put a little bookmark on them. I thought they looked interesting. I can go back and read them later. Um, if I want to remove that, just click this button here. And that will then be removed from my bookmarks list. And obviously now I've just got four bookmarks in there. Um, and then here is the offline bookshelf. So this is all of the content that you've added to your offline bookshelf. I'm just going to dismiss this. So I have a couple of books here um, that have actually been added um, to the bookshelf. If I don't want them on there anymore, I can just click to remove. Or I could click to go to the book and read it online. And this tells you as well when the offline expiry date is. Now, I think they're set at the moment to 60 days, but there is going to be some development to extend that to just the um, entitlement period. So it's just got an arbitrary 60 days at the moment, but that will increase. And let me just check. Yes. So to get the app, this is really important. Um, there's a little bit of text. You can find out more information about on our online bookshelf here. So just click this link. And then it talks a little bit about the bookshelf. And down here, you can actually get it for your particular operating system. So you've got the Windows version there and you've got the um, Mac version there. And there's a version for iOS as well. Um, I'll be honest, I did get my, get, um, my partner to search in the um, iPhone store um, yesterday and he couldn't find it. I'm on Android. It is available in the Play Store, um, but I don't think it's available on iOS just yet. Um, however, if I just come back into my PowerPoint, I did prepare a few screenshots of the um, Android version. So let's have a quick look. So it's available on your desktop or on your phone. Um, an iPad, well, coming soon for iPad. Um, but this is what it looks like. And I think you're going to really feel quite familiar with this actually, because it looks obviously a smaller screen. Um, I've got the Samsung Galaxy S8, so it's very, quite a long screen, feels quite thin, but um, you can see that we've got the bookshelf there. And then we've got the online reader, looks very much the same as it does on the desktop. And I just took a screenshot of the bookmark function as well. So you can just see um, very much identical to what you see on the um, desktop app. Okay, wonderful. So um, instead of just questions, I'm actually going to say that I'll be handing over to my colleague Dave to give us a bit of a talk about some of the um, developments. So um, thanks very much for joining us, Dave, and, and over to you. Thanks very much. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Dave Morris. I'm our digital projects editor focusing on higher education, which is a little bit of a mouthful. Uh, so I'm part of our digital publishing team. Um, my role has very much been to make sure we're joining up all the bits of the business while we develop this new website. So I've been working with the online experience team who develop our websites and platforms, uh, but also colleagues in editorial sales, marketing, to make sure that we're all joined up and we're we're really finding out what the market wants, what you want, never mind the market. So in terms of how we've gone about developing this website, uh, we started out from a place of finding that our customers, instructors like you, really had a need for uh, a dedicated home for our teaching and learning content. Um, so I'm sure you all know or are aware of Cambridge Core, which is our online research platform. And that was very much developed to deliver book and journal research content. Uh, and we felt, and you felt that kind of muddling our textbooks up in there was not the most helpful way of presenting that. Uh, we'd very much done that sort of a, a short term solution to get some textbooks online, but we wanted to 
develop out this website so that you had a much better instructor experience of trying to find useful teaching content. Uh, and we decided we were going to deliver that using the existing core platform. So the underlying technology for Cambridge Core is reusable and that's what we've done here. And that is really, really great, we think. It gives a consistent user experience. So if you're used to Core, the, the higher education website will feel really familiar and similar while being distinctive. Uh, it also joins up all of our content, which is really good. So what you'll find uh, with time is that you'll be able to search for content on Cambridge Core and the higher education website and you'll get search results for both websites coming up, which will be really, really good. Uh, I've just stolen one of the points from a little bit later in my talk, but I think that's, that's really worth flagging up. Uh, it also allowed us to use existing experience we had in-house. So we've developed this platform ourselves. We're not reliant on third-party developers uh, or relying on another publisher or anything like that. So we're very much in control of our own destiny with this website. We can decide what we want to develop and when we want to develop it, which I think is really, really good. Throughout that development process, we've regularly consulted with our instructor panel. So we have around 400 instructors who uh, take on various tasks for us and give us feedback on our designs and our priorities, which has been hugely helpful. We also have a student and a librarian equivalent as well. So we've been going out to all of those kind of key constituencies and taking feedback from real people who will be using our website. Because again, we are publishers and we know our business well, but we know that our customers know what they want even better than we do. So we've always been trying to get their feedback in. Uh, and because we're in control of our own development and we're developing in an agile way, that means we can respond really quickly to that feedback, which has been hugely, hugely helpful. Uh, and as we've already mentioned, we were initially aiming for a December 2020 launch. And in light of COVID back in March, we decided we'd aim for a June beta launch and an August hard launch. And I'm really happy to say that we've met both of those deadlines. Uh, and the amount of work that's gone on since June to get it from kind of a bare minimum product to what we've got now has been fantastic to see. Our teams have worked really, really hard on that. I'm so proud of them for all that they've done. Uh, so that's that's really good. Um, in terms of sort of that ongoing development work, first and foremost, what we really want to do is take in user feedback. So please do take a look at the website and send us any feedback that you have. We would love to hear it. Uh, like I say, we've consulted sort of 400-ish instructors. Not all of them have responded to everything. So we are really keen to get your feedback and find out what you think. Uh, and we would we would love to get that in and we'll take a look through and see what we can do to implement that. We'll, uh, we're also working at the moment towards joining up related content across our platforms. Uh, so that's a real mix of things. Uh, in part, it's that kind of joined up search I was talking about a bit earlier. Uh, but we also want to highlight related content on book landing pages. So you can see books and other content that's similar and we think will be really useful to you. So for example, if you're trying to build uh, a reading list that's kind of based around your core textbook, but you really want to pull in some research content, that'll be available for you. Uh, and that, that's something we're really excited to do. Uh, we're also going to improve our book landing page. So right now, the book landing page is nice and simple. It contains all the key information we think you want to see. It's much better. Ooh. Uh, hopefully you can all still hear me. So yeah, we're really excited to get on with that. We're going to be adding uh, copy and paste as well as printing to the e-reader, which is really, really good. So we've got plenty of things coming. Oh, and uh, e-commerce as well. So your students will be able to buy print and digital books directly from that new website. And then longer term, uh, we are looking at a few bits of functionality. So we are looking at bringing in the ability for you as instructors to share notes and bookmarks from your version of the e-reader with your students so that you can provide them with a really good online course pack uh, and show them where you want them to be reading when. We're also looking at embedding some enhanced content. So at the moment we've got pic uh, images built in, but we're looking at how we can build in things like videos and supplementary material inline so that they're available in the relevant places. 
Uh, and the other really exciting thing with this new website is that our editorial teams are out commissioning new, better textbooks as well, so that we're getting lots of content to fill the new site. Uh, and we actually started doing that a few years ago before we started developing the site. So we're beginning to see the fruits of that labor, but it's something you'll see more and more of. So there'll be more high quality teaching and learning content available. So I think that's everything I have. I'll hand back over for questions. Thank you very much, Dave. It was um, lovely to hear your points about development. It's fantastic, thank you. Um, so we have got a few questions, which is fantastic. Um, we've had one from um, Lanifet, um, and they've said, is the book in the offline bookshelf? Will it expire? How many days can it be available in the bookshelf? And um, what about the highlighting and annotation of the user um, if they have the notes in the book? So it's 60 days in the offline bookshelf at the moment. If I just show you, I think you can all still see my screen, hopefully. Um, if I just go back to, first of all, inside the offline bookshelf here. Sorry for jumping all around into different apps. Um, this little Cambridge University Press crest brings you back to the front page. It took me a few minutes to find that actually, so probably worth knowing about. <laughs> um, so you get 60 days at the moment. So this one is 55 days remaining, so I added it, I added it quite a while ago. But the plan for development is that this will be matching the entitlement. So if your university has purchased um, a book and the the lease expires at the end of December, let's say, then um, the idea is you'll be able to access, um, have this in your bookshelf right up to the end of the lease period. Just got another question here. So I hope I did answer that one in text as well. So I hope that's, um, that's uh, sufficient. Um, is that the print, the amount that you can print, is that calculated per login or per user? So um, it's basically a single user, so a single account, a single registration will get 15% of any given book. So it's per user. Um, so I'll just uh, type that one into this, um, into the chat and send that. Um, we've got another one. Um, can the user share their annotation and highlighting with other users? Oh, that's a very good question. I don't think so, but I'm going to hand over to Dave for that one. Yeah, absolutely. So at the moment they can't, uh, but that's something that we are going to be looking into developing probably sometime in 2021. So we're starting to sort of scope that out and think about what we'd like to do beyond the end of our current development roadmap. And that is absolutely one of the points that's on there. Lovely. Thank you, Dave. Fantastic. Do so another there. And this is on. I'm just going to type this answer as well so that um, it's available to us all after the session. Um, cool. Were there any more questions? We've had a few in the Q&A um, and we've got the chat as well. So people are welcome to put their questions there if they like. Uh, great, we've got another one. Um, so thank you very much to Xi Sheng Tang. Um, if an instructor buys the hard copy book and requests for the instructor content, is this possible? Um, oh, that's quite interesting, actually. I'm not sure about that one. Do you know, Dave? So I think we will make that available. Uh, we, we want to make instructor content available to anybody who's teaching this material. So as long as you get in touch and let us know that you're planning to use it on a course, our team will be happy to make that available to you. And uh, it will definitely, that access will definitely be available at least for the duration of any and all courses you're teaching. I'm not sure if we have any plans to um, remove access once you've finished using the book for courses, uh, but I'm sure that's something we can find out. Lovely, thank you so much, Dave. That's fantastic. Um... Wonderful. So just replying on the text there as well, because these are all available after the session, the questions. Um, so thank you very much for that question. So wonderful. Um, looks like um, questions have gone all quiet for now. Um, one thing I should mention, actually, that is here in my notes, but I forgot to mention, um, when you get the offline reader, um, 
actually you need to add a book to your offline bookshelf on the online version before it will let you log in so that's a funny little peculiarity so don't get caught out by that one um because it look, might look like it's not working but all you need to do is make sure you added a book to your offline bookshelf and then you're all good to go but definitely worth mentioning that um, well, wonderful. Um, so look, we have some contact details up here. If you have any more questions about the site, um, any from a training point of view, we've got academic training at cambridge.org. Um, I've got a couple of sort of generic um, sort of sales inboxes here, which you're welcome to get in touch with as well. There's quite a lot of contact us pages on the HE website though. So um, there's no shortage of, um, you know, um, ways to get in touch with us. But as Dave mentioned, we really do want to hear from you um, because this has been built for instructors um, and for our academic community. So we really like to have you help us drive the development with features that you think are important. So it's very important for us to hear from you. Um, but yeah, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and um, you will get a link tomorrow um, with a recording of um, this session as well available for you so that will be available after the session um, and then it'll link to some more contact details um, as well so um, we've got our sales director for Australia Michael Cowley as well on the call with us um, so we will obviously be able to get you in touch um, with the relevant people who are local to you as well um, in Asia Pacific and Australia region well, thank you ever so much for your time, everyone, um, especially to um, Dave and, and Michael who were on the call with us. So thank you very much and, and for getting up so early. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, please do be in touch if you have any questions and, and um, thank you for attending. <laughs>